Xbox cards out the way. Okay. This is gonna be a little guide for all you people who want to look up a guide for Dragon's Dogma 2 and I see all these infinite XP and money glitches and they all say the same thing. They want you to buy apples and grapes, let them ripen by resting at one of these things. But what they're not telling you is that they're spending tens of hours doing this. They're, it's such a waste of time. Um, there's just no reason to do any of that. Okay. So if you're not if you're not playing the game to role play and you need to look up a guide for XP and money, my advice to you would be to stick with the main quest line. Do as many of the side quests as you want to do, but the main quest line's gonna be your best bet. I'll show you where to get the courtly tunic and breeches really quick. That way, if you're struggling to find those from that tavern here, I'm just gonna head up to the castle. There's a couple of different ways for you to get courtly tunic and breeches, but this is the fastest way. E most easily accessible way. We shall await Hello, you good day, sirs. Okay, so we're gonna come run into the masquerade hall here. Take a right. Excuse me, miss. I don't mean to barge into you, but this room here has the courtly tunic breeches. There you go. That's gonna be part of one of your main quests there. Okay, so that was the courtly tunic and breeches. That's gonna keep you going along your main quest, so you shouldn't struggle with gold there. Now for experience, a lot of people like to get this Medusan spell bow, and I don't recommend going this route because it restricts you to the ranger, and I'm going to discuss that later in the video. For now, you're going to be like level 1 or 2. For the most part, I recommend exploring the map. Just get out there and explore. Um, also, when you first make it to Vernworth, make sure you come and get this port crystal. Activate this port crystal. That way, if you find any fairy stones, you can fast travel back here. Otherwise, you have to find an ox cart at one of the settlements. Which isn't bad, but fairy stones are useful. <laughs> it's a blue person. Okay, so another thing you can do is you can come into the rift over here, or pretty much anywhere there's a rift stone. Um, you want to fill out your party with pawns. Now, depending on your play style, I like picking a different class for everybody. But if you have friends that play the game, and they're a higher level, you can use... I, I guess I haven't tested that out myself, but you can use their pawns for free, and they'll be a higher level, which that should help you along your way to leveling. Let me get back. Alright, so yeah, as far as... Leveling up in the beginning, 
Just to getting out there and exploring the map's going to be your best bet. I believe in Melv, there's a tower. You can get on this tower here, and there's a griffin that'll spawn across the way. You can shoot for 7k XP. That's in Melv. But all I did was travel back and forth and explore the map. Playing the smuggler playstyle is great. Taking the apples and grapes, letting them ripen, then crossing the border and selling them for profit. I call that the smuggler playstyle. Now, you can do that for gold, but I only recommend doing that as a side thing, not being your main method of playstyle or money gaining. That's just going to waste your time in this game. So that's going to get you started for experience. If you want to max out all the vocations, I recommend getting the Wayfarer or Warfarer. Um, because it will actually rank up <clears throat> all of the other vocations as you rank up Warfare. I did not know that and did not do that. I recommend that you do that. And then, then choose one that's more specific to your playstyle. Or if you prefer being able to mix together some of the abilities... Like, you can make an extremely powerful build using the Mystic Spearhands Mirror Shield. And then you could combine almost any of the classes with that. But Magic Archer and Thief are going to provide you with some powerful uh, um, abilities. And now, I'm going to show you how to maximize your leveling. Okay, so once you start leveling up, and you think Welcome you start taking Sparrow. on the dragons... You'll find only pieces of the finest quality, and quality is what you need if you want to survive. So before you check the price, just remember... One of the best ways to make money is going to be selling these Wyrm's Life Crystals. But you're also going to use these in New Game Plus and for Equipment Enhancement. So, you want to decide whether you want to sell them for money or keep them later for what they're actually used for. 30 of them is worth 45,000 gold. Now that's great and all, but I think I'll bring those Wyrm's Life Crystals to the Dragonforge dude here. And so what he does is he will improve a vocation. And it says boost status increase when leveling up. So this doesn't work for any level you've previously obtained. It only works while you have this vocation boosted and you level up. So to maximize leveling up, instead of just... Getting a bunch of experience using the Medusan spell bow. I recommend choosing one of these vocation improvements, because you can only choose one. Then, so you can also choose a skill to improve, but it just takes 50% of the stamina. But in New Game Plus, you get this option to receive a blessing. For one full day, you will gain increased experience. It's basically times two experience. It might be more. I haven't tested it 100%. You could also choose the discipline and a couple other options that I don't ever really choose. But you only get these options in New Game Plus. So I recommend following... 
the main quest line and finishing your first playthrough, I wouldn't say as quickly as possible, just as maybe at as low a level as possible. That way you can min-max your levels later on, but... Then I bid ye farewell. That is how I recommend going about raising your level instead of just quadrupling your XP with the Medusan spell bow. Pick a class, boost the vocation. That way, every time you level up, you're getting stats for that vocation. But. I also haven't tested what his boost does 100%. Alright. Well, that's my little Why You're Trash at Dragon's Dogma 2 following the guide that makes you waste 10 hours wait, waiting for apples and grapes to ripen when you could just be progressing your main quest line. Okay, so a quick rundown of what we went over. Don't waste time buying apples and grapes and waiting for them to ripen in Melv then crossing the border and selling them for a profit you can play as a smuggler all, all you want but don't waste 10 hours of the game only doing that do that on the side if you follow the main quest line and make sure you pick up your port crystal in Vernworth so that you can fast travel back. If you just get out and explore the map, you'll level up just fine. Follow the main quest line. There's a ballista on the tower here in Melv. You can use to shoot the griffin that spawns across the lake here. A river, whatever. That'll give you some XP. But other than that, stick with your main quest line. If you're struggling to find the court, the courtly tune. I think maybe this is the masquerade hall. This is the masquerade hall. Okay. Come into the masquerade hall. There's a set of courtly tunic and breeches in here. If you're stuck on that part of the main quest line. Other than that, complete your first playthrough. Then in your second playthrough, immediately come to the Dragon Forged and activate your vocation boost because it resets it. Reactivate your vocation boost and start activating the experience boost. If you main a ranger and use the Medusan Spellbow, that's great. But I don't recommend doing that if you want to play as a different vocation. So that's it, everybody. Quit wasting time ripening apples and grapes. Follow your main quest line and explore the map. Or also visit the Sphinx at the Mountain Shrine. And continue being a smuggler on the side, but don't waste 10 hours of your life doing it. If you want to level up quick, that's great. But you're missing out on stat points if you don't boost the vocation. So, just a heads up. Alright, that's it. Thanks everybody.